Hello. Welcome to session three of um, this uh, mental health awareness and discourse. No, welcome to my channel. And today you can see my face. Okay. Um, yes, because I got help from my sister. You no, know? so thank you, Huichun, you know, for helping me, you know, do up the lighting so that my face now becomes more visible. Yeah. So um, for today, I will be sharing with you about seven key attitudes to survive the COVID situation. Um, so, um, yeah, so I think without further ado, let's just start. Mm, okay. Okay, is it working? Mm -hmm. Give me a second. The hair looks kind of weird. Okay, now my hair just tie up. Okay, my thing is done. So, okay. okay. So, so the, the seven, seven key attitudes, attitudes um, includes this one. This, this is, is the, the first key attitude, attitude which I stated. Oh. Okay. Hope, hope is um, actually what uh, I'll define it as is that it's the anticipation of something desirable to manifest in the future. So without hope, we won't even want to like try to survive or anything. And uh, if we think that it's hopeless, then we will just be in in apathy, and then we will just allow whatever to to come to us, and then we just succumb to it. So hope is something that's very important. Uh, especially in this time of you no know, um, upheaval, um, with hope you will um, you you feel that you will be able to let's say recover whether it's from financial distress, from illness, from um, maybe loss of income or something or, or changes etc. You no, know, so um, hope yeah, hope is one attitude that we need to have. You no. Know, uh, to survive COVID-19. So the next one is, um, I stated here, mindfulness of the passage of time. It can actually mean uh, mindfulness in a broad sense, but uh, when I talk about mindfulness in the passage of time, you know, as uh, what is below, you know, the, there's this phrase called, this too shall pass. Um, I think this too shall pass came to me through a story uh, which, which I heard, heard quite some time ago. So um, it, it talks about how uh, everything can be quite impermanent and that uh, whether it's good or it's bad, you know, it, um, it can just pass and you know, uh, we can just move on. So um, when I'm referring to um, being mindful about the passage of time, uh, note that this COVID-19 is not the whole of your life. So, I think my audience are probably people older than 15. But if let's say you are, let's say, um, 12 to 15 years old, okay, um, even then, um, your, even your life um, to current is quite short. And that um, at this point in time, you have COVID-19 and you are probably studying at home. Uh, listening to the teachers and the lecture uh, and the uh, lessons where um, yeah, yeah, while the teachers are like trying, trying to teach everyone and maybe going slightly mad. mad. But then um, when, when you were to reflect back, um, COVID-19 might, might be something on your mind for let's say um, between three months or up to a year. But if let's say you are 15 years old it's, and you only have your memories um, from three years old, then that will be just about one fifth of your life right now. Oh, sorry, sorry, not, not one fifth. That'd be, be one, one over 12 you know, of, of your lifetime that's involved in COVID virus. Um, quite a significant but actually small amount. But, but if let's say you're someone who has um, is around 40, like me, um, it will mean that this one month or even half a year to a year will just be um, a, very, a, a smaller fraction than that of a teenager. 
And before that, there will be other things that you have gone through in life, like studies, graduation, getting a job, or making friends, maybe having a romance, or, or getting married, or having children, etc. Or if let's say you are even older, let's say you are 80 years old or 60 years old, then um, you might have gone through other things like maybe um, illness, uh, um, death of a parent, of a, of a spouse, um, no, changing life stages. So in view of that, COVID-19 and current hardships are just a very small part. What happens for us usually uh, in our hardship is that um, time expands, especially for people in, who are depressed. It's like as if uh, whatever that they are going through right now, the current suffering is endless and it lasts forever. But in actual fact, if you are to take a, a step back and you are to reflect it as part of your life, you realize that you have actually gone through other obstacles in life before and you have actually survived them. So uh, in the span of time, um, this COVID-19 may not be something very, very significant, may not be the most impactful thing of your life. And that um, so since it's not that big deal, you can probably move on. So this is an attitude which you can have. Yeah, that COVID-19, these two shall pass. So the third one, grit. Okay. Grit is a third attitude which I think it will be important to have, you know, especially um, in the current situation. In this uh, slide, you can see that uh, it, these are some of the words that's associated with grit, like courage, bravery, pluck, metal, uh, backbone, spirit, strength of character, strength of will, moral fiber, steel, nerve, fortitude, toughness, hardiness, resolve, resolution, determination, tenacity, perseverance, endurance, or having guts, or being very spunky. Having grit means um, something like just, just um, hanging on there, you know, being tough and just surviving it through. No, I think the true meaning of surviving it through. Um, in the next slide, I show um, this is something from my print that I found online um, as to why kids quit. And I actually found this when I was actually Googling on grit. So this quitting part is actually the opposite of having grit. And these are some of the reasons why kids quit. And this could be some of the reasons that cause us to uh, quit. Uh, and quite quits you no know, with COVID nineteen and just succumb whatever that comes to us you no. Know. So it could be that we stop believing in ourselves, we can overwork, or that we are afraid of change. Ex we can expect fast results, nothing on mistake. Oh, I should have done that. I should have done that, etc. Never visualizing it's possible. Seeing failure as a symbol to turn back. So now I think. No, I, I don't do it. No, I, I will fail. No. Or feeling the world owes them something that you knows like, okay, um, well, COVID-19 is like that. I'm losing my job and you know, I, I don't have income and everything. My, my kids need, need money and feeding, etc. So I'm going to wait for the government to, you know, to, to, to help me since it's their job. But that's, that's, that's not, not very helpful. helpful. And if uh, that's actually depending on something that's outside yourself. And if in the end it doesn't work out, then you'll actually be very angry, very depressed, and also um, kind of anxious. So other reasons stated here, like stop believing in themselves, believe in their weakness, fear they have something to lose, fear failure more than they desire success, assuming their problems are unique, and etc. So... For us to have great, this is the opposite. You will actually need to uh, not have all these things, a bit contrary to what we're talking about, but uh, try not to be, like, for example, stuck in the past. The past is over. No, the pre-COVID times are not ever coming back. Maybe you can actually uh, reminisce on them in your memory, but um, I think the world will be different. And currently, we are in, we're going through COVID-19 and it's not like the past. It's not like the past. 
So, in terms of grit, okay, um, grit can also be um, defined as uh, having a firmness of character or indomitable spirit. So, in this picture, you have this, this person who's actually hanging there on the rock and just hanging, you know. Um, it's very easy for us to, I think, comfort-wise, if we are very used to a very cushy life, things could be quite easy and you have never, ever had a need to work for it. So, um, when you have to work for it and, like, you know, hang on onto a rock like this person in, in the picture, then it could be... Uh, it could feel very difficult, it could feel very tough, but what you need to do is to just hang on. And whatever else there is out there that allows you to, to, to survive, you are, you are just to do it. Okay. It could be that it's something that's below, beneath you previously, or that is too, too dirty, too, too impractical, too don't know whatever, you know, out there, all types of excuses to keep you in your comfort zone. But right now, with this new uh, situation, COVID-19, uh, what I'm talking about right now is not just the current uh, state where we have the heightened um, safe distancing measure where we all have to stay stay at home, etc. But when this moves on, because it will definitely move on, I don't think we'll be at home forever. And then uh, we will uh, we will have to go out and continue with life sometime. And, in, and there will be other things that can happen, like um, economic downturn, loss of jobs, loss of income, um, lots of other things. So when that happens, then it will take grit for you to just hang hang on, just hang in there and just do whatever it takes to just survive. So grit is something important to have. Okay, next up, surrender. Very, very different from grit. Grit is just hang on, be tough, survive, just do it. Surrender is um, when you have actually tried everything. Um, you have done all that you can, uh, you have exhausted all means, you have tried to find different things that you can do to, um, pre like for example, currently, um, if let's say you, you are fearful that you might actually get infected with the COVID-19 virus, you might want to make sure that you, you know, um, do not go out often, or when you go out, you don don on a surgical mask, or whatever other mask that you have, you might wash your hands very regularly, sanitize you know, whichever areas that you might be touching before you touch them, making sure that you don't touch your face, you know, all these things that's in, in compliance with whatever that the Ministry of Health actually advised us. And when you have done everything and ensure that everybody around you tries, everybody around you in your family tries to do the same, then, um, all you can do next is just to surrender. Surrender in the sense that um, you have tried everything, but even if then that's the case and you get it, you get infected with COVID-19, that that's something that is beyond your control. So um, I think many of us are in Singapore especially are control freaks. So everything needs to be in our control and that if, if it doesn't happen that way, if things are out of control, we feel terrified, we are anxious, we are angry, and then we, we start to like, you know, uh, blast out at people or something like that. And uh, in order for us to um, feel that our lives are in control, we control everything. But there are certain situations that cannot be controlled. And when you try to force... Um, and try to control things that's beyond your control, then all you get is just a lot of suffering and anxiety. So if you can actually just surrender yourself to that the unknown, that this um and hope and have hope for that you will you will pull through this, then then that will be quite helpful. If you don't actually um okay um surrender to that this unknown um, fate that may happen, whether it's to, whether this, um, 
this uh, outcome will depend on God or no or any other things out there in the world depending on religion, then it's then I, I think it will it will just pull you into anxiety, anger, frustration, and then maybe you go into a crisis. That's not very helpful. But then again, going back, I want you to I just want to emphasize that surrendering doesn't mean that you just do nothing and just okay, I just leave it to fate. Um, it doesn't work that way. And uh, it really requires you to do something about it as well. This reminds me of a story that I've heard before, you no, know, regardless of whatever religion there is out there. Maybe I just share the, the story. I think that's um this there's um this flood in this whole place, the county or or a town and then there's this person who's very pious and then he prays to his God and say, No God please come and save me. No, I'm stuck here and I don't want to die. So then when he's praying then there's a uh, there, there are people who pass him and say, Come come join us in our boat. No, it's we, we are here that you can just join us the space and then the person say, No, I'm not going to take your boat. I'm just I'm waiting for God to come and save me. So then these people decided, okay, then we can't wait for you forever. Then they just decided to leave. And then after that, you have a next, next uh, bunch of people who come and say, hey, um, how about joining us? No, it's, it's flooding and it's, no, it is, it's getting up to your, your, your waist. Um, come, come get into our boat. And then we can all just like, no, um, um, get away from here, no, go to safer lands and stuff like that. But, but this person decided and and told them that no, uh, it's okay and don't worry about me. Please go and save other people. God will save me. So in the end, he does this again, maybe another one or two times, and then later he he drowned and died. When he died, uh, and then he went to heaven or somewhere. He he asked he saw God and he asked him, no, so God, well, no, how come you didn't go and save me? I trusted you so I trust I put my trust in you and I trusted you so much. Where were you when I needed you? I prayed. Where? How? Why? And then God answered him. Um well then um you know the boats I sent some boats to save you. So in this story, the moral of the story is that of um, you apart from just waiting to be helped. You will have to help yourself as well. So this surrender means that you you do your best and then um you do whatever that is within your control and then leave whatever that's out of your control to the hands of whatever that is out there. Just to surrender to you. Okay. So this is another important um um attitude to have during this COVID nineteen situation. That's number four. Okay. So, so number, number five, five is finding meaning. Finding meaning in this situation, it could be um, finding a purpose, finding whatever it is that you are doing or not doing. You, If you are to find some meaning to it, then it will actually add to your narrative. So the, in the newest advertisements or the, the uh, media um, that the propaganda related things that the government has actually rolled out. You have this um this this slide or this this movie which talks about how it's important for you to stay home. So if let's say um you you find a meaning to that. So I am staying home because it allows me to uh um make sure that this circuit breaker works. Okay, if that's that's an association that you have with it, then and you 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 bear in mind that is why you are actually staying home and not going out more often and etc. Then that will actually expand you as a person and that you no know, um what this this whole endeavor and this this thing at home during this COVID nineteen will will make sense. It will have it will take on a new meaning. But if let's say you have you are. You, you have decided to take action, like for example, decided to volunteer, decided to uh, write thank you cards, and then you know, or join the clapping of hands at 8 p.m., one of these 
one of these previous days, you know, to, to, to cheer for all those healthcare workers in the front line. So that is, um, if you are aligned to that and you believe in that and you make some meaning out of the, the thing that you're doing, then it will expand yourself as a person. So if you are able to try and find meaning in everything that you are doing, um, with respect to this COVID-19, like um, whether you are taking care of your kids more, whether you are talking to your parents more, etc., whatever it is, uh, finding meaning is an attitude that is very helpful for you to actually survive COVID-19. If not, then everything else feels like a ball. You feel trapped at home. You feel that it's suffering and it's unbearable. And it, it that's not very useful. So instead of that, it, why not find some meaning in what you are trying to do or what you are doing? Okay, that's, I think, number five. That's number five. Number six in our list, you know, approaching the end soon. Number six is connectedness. Okay. Um, in this picture here, you it's like a kaleidoscope. You have lots and lots of people with lots and lots of faces. And I just want to stress that COVID-19 is not, not something that uh, only we are impacted with. This is not something that's a Singapore thing. This is not an Asian thing either. This is global and it... It, it um, impacts, impacts everyone, everyone ar across, across and around. around. And, and in Singapore, in Singapore it, doesn't it doesn't really matter, matter whether, whether you, are, you are, you know, know rich, rich or poor or, or, or no, no, no. Just, just like, like our pledge, pledge. No. No. Regardless, regardless of, of race, race uh, uh, what is that? Is that? Re regardless, regardless of race, race language, language or religion. religion. So, so in this case, COVID-19 doesn't care whether you are a certain race or religion. Or, or even, even whether, whether you are, you are foreign. foreign. So, so in Singapore, in Singapore we, are we are all connected, connected in, in this uh, situation that, that we have, have right, right now. now. Whether, whether you are a Singaporean, a PR, a PR a domestic helper, helper whether, whether you are a foreign, foreign worker, worker, whether, whether you, you are a lawyer, lawyer whether, whether you are a judge, judge whether, whether you are a doctor, doctor no, whether, whether you are a cleaner, cleaner it, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. All, All of us, us are connected, connected and, and suffering and looking at the same thing, thing at the same, same time. time. So, so when, when you are you to view this, uh, this situation in this manner, manner then, then you will find that, that um, there really, really is, is less difference between, between people out there. Out there. No. no. So, so of all those people, people out there who had been, been very, very different, different from you and that you felt very, very different from, we are all the same. We are, we are all just, just human beings, beings and, and we, we all can succumb, succumb to the, the illness, illness and, and we, we all fear and we are, and we are all um, trying, trying to you know, scramble, scramble and get, and get our, our lives together. together. And, and we, are we are all just trying, trying to survive. survive. So, so when, when you can, can feel this sense of connectedness in this situation, situation then, then that, that will be um, that is something helpful, helpful for, for you to, to, to um, get, get over and survive COVID-19. Okay. Very, Very quickly, quickly, we are up to our last, to our last no, the, the seven, seven key attitudes to, 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 and, and to, to survive, survive COVID-19. And, and that, that is the opportunities. It's actually seizing, seizing opportunities. opportunities. So, so in this quotation, you have this, this uh, I think, by success.com. Success opportunities are like sunrises. If you, you wait too long, you will miss them. them. So the, um, for me, I, I think, think that um, COVID-19, however bad it is, it actually gives us quite a lot of opportunities to do things in a very new or different way. Opportunities like the opportunity to rest and rejuvenate. So for all those who have been working really, really hard, you know, having all the overtimes, all the, like, you know, when, that your, your company is on at one end of, the, of Singapore and you live on the other end, or that you have to um, go through all these meetings and rushing things, like many Singaporeans do. No. In Singapore, it's a high, um, it's a highly industrialized uh, country with lots and lots of activities. So you hardly have the time to actually sleep late, maybe, or to rest, and um, to, to just sit around 
and do nothing if you can at certain points of time. But then if let's say that's not the case for you, you know, if let's say you have to work from home, then maybe this is this opportunity is for someone else, maybe not for you. But there are other things. So there are also opportunities like uh, the opportunity to learn and grow. This is something which the government has actually rolled out as well, you know, via skills future. So um, while many, many uh, industries are impacted, like for example, anything that has got to do get and anything that has got to do with entertainment or maybe just like uh, retail um, are mainly closed. So um, it could mean that you can take this opportunity to learn something new or to learn new ways to actually manage your business. And um, I, I say it again and again. So like for, for me, it's actually to learn and to grow in ways like using online or live broadcast and to actually use um, like um, video conferencing to, to actually do therapy. This is something new which I um, had not had the opportunity or chance to try out or use previously. But now that I have this this time and space and and that everybody else is also at home, so this is something which I had the chance to do. So I took this opportunity to do it. So a third opportunity is actually to be human. You know? um, like I said earlier on, you no, know, oftentimes we are just too busy with our lives to to think about other things. And I think to a certain extent we might have been too busy to actually be human. Um, sometimes I think that perhaps we uh, have been really working like robots, that we don't really need rest, and we don't need to connect, and we don't need to talk with people, we don't need to actually go, to, in, go into nature and appreciate things, and we forgot how it's like to be human. So with COVID-19, if you are at home, if you are not doing anything, or if that you are actually at the front line or you are working with other people who, who, are, who are also helping out you know, with this situation, then you might actually um, want to have the opportunity to, to be more compassionate, be more grateful, be more aware and maybe to appreciate life more. Something which I um, spoke about with other people during my other talks was that, um, so it's like this, um, I will I'll ask them a question like, for example, you know, so what are some of the things that you actually had planned to do like today or tomorrow? And then they will just list down some of the things that they have in their plans. But the next question which I had is that, so supposing that um that you hear news that you no know, all, all your all your phones are ringing right now because people are sending messages, you no know, WhatsApp and etc. and calling and saying that uh the there's the latest news that say that a meteorite is going to hit Earth and that um we'll all just die in the next I don't know um half a day you no know, five hours or so then in view of that would would your priorities and your goals change? Will your previous priorities and the previous goals have any sense? And what causes them to be unimportant and more? So when I ask this question, some of the participants will, will um, have a little bit of a like, paradigm shift. You know, they'll be like, oh, okay, a sudden wake up call. And then they will say that, um, in this last moments, this last hours, I will probably just leave my work and go and just go home to spend time with my family, just to hug my kids more, uh, have a have a nice dinner with my my parent or something like that. You know, so they will say things like, mm, if time is not sufficient for any other things, so because we go to work. Um, for to just to earn money or to make sure that uh, we have a good life 
we have enough food on the table. There's that's good. There's a there's a safe place to live in, etc. Some of these things that we do are actually very much to plan for the future. But if there's no future, then all these do not make sense. So、um, while I'm quite hopeful that most of us. Most of us will actually be able to make it into the future.、Um, it there's no guarantee, and that、um, if that really does happen at some point of time, then you really should cherish what you have right now. Maybe time with your family, time that you spend together with your loved ones,、um, the food that you have, or some of the things that you had. Because we will never know whether there's going to be a future to a certain extent, so it's very important to just center yourself and just go back to being the human that you are, rather than the robot that was that that works nonstop and earns tons of money and etc. Okay, so the opportunity to be human. Okay, the next one that I have is the opportunity to do stock taking. So、uh, it's a time where you can reassess a little bit about your priorities and、uh, direction in life, add some of your habits and attitudes. So it could be that、um, just looking at COVID. So if let's say I'm a business owner or that、uh, I happen to just have all the wrong things at the wrong time, etc., then Um, I've maybe spent my life、um, and lots of money studying this new thing, you no, know,、uh, and in the hopes that I can actually do a career change. Then、um, I've also invested in maybe I know、uh, had some loans and invested in this new equipment or new factory or. Um, renting down the space, you no, know, and ready to just start my new new venture. But then COVID happened, and then you're stuck. Okay, there's no business. There's no customers. Um, everybody's scared to come. The malls are closed. You're not allowed to go out. The rent is there. And it keeps going. Hmm. You have your loan. You have your family that you need to feed. You maybe, maybe have, have a car or something else. So,、uh, what, what does it boil down, down to? You no, know? is it is it the right direction or is it the right thing to do? In reverse, it could also happen to like you no. Know,、um, sorry, it could also happen to someone who's very rich and successful all the while. Lots and lots of the same money and status and power and let's say. No, everything that you work for to plan for the future, maybe a good retirement and etc., might at in the blink of an eye be gone. So then, apart from of course, there's the there's the crisis part, which is like you know, it's like all that I've worked for, all that I've worked for is gone, and that is 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 unbearable. But the other end is also something like so um. All that, that I thought would make me happy or successful has come to naught because of something that's out of my control and totally unexpected. So, is this is the sacrifice worth it?、Uh, that in all the hours that I spent away from my loved ones, that that I and my children grew up without having me around much, and that maybe the relationship is. Not really there as well. They only recognize me for my my wealth, and they are looking at they they just come and look for me if they want money or to get a car or something. So is it worth it? Are all these things that you you deem important really that important? And could they be gone in a second when something unexpected happens? And Then what about your happiness? No, it has it been fulfilling. Um, if you are to just die today, would you have regrets? 
regrets of let's say not having lived your life, not having time to 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 go to go traveling where you wanted to, you no, know, because you have always thought that you had time in the future. Um, so things like that, you no, know, reassessing priorities. Is it are uh, are those that are those things that you have been working on the really important things? Or are there other more important things to you that you have neglected, you no, know, and that you hope that you will be able to do in the future? So with this, there's this opportunity to just really look at all this. Is am I um living the way I wanted to? Um, is this how I would envision myself to be when I was filling up the you know, my ambitions when I was young? Did I become a person which I dislike? Um, do I do things without thinking? Am I ashamed of myself? Could I have done better? Could I have been different? So things like that. So very deep questions could be very hard questions, but uh, I think it's worth a shot to think through them if you want to. And then um, if you decided that what you had been doing is not something that you wanted to do anymore, then you can actually change the direction. Just take the time to think about it if you wish to. Okay, next. Oh, okay, last one. The Uno World Cup. I don't know if all of you are like me. I played Uno when I'm young. And in Uno, um, which is a card game, there's this World Cup, which has four colors, and then you can just use any color to play after that. So when I talk about Uno World Cup, it's a little bit like um, what I said just now. COVID-19 hits you um, and hits the industry just like a wild card. It doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor, or male or female or, or anything. And it doesn't really matter which industry you are from. You know, I think it's slightly random. So I think to a certain extent, it breaks all these rules and barriers that, that we had previously. If let's say we are to look at... Um, uh, a society and a, a nation. Usually what happens is that um, well, af after a certain amount of time, then you will, have, you will actually have this um, this thing whereby the, the, the wealth is, ev is unevenly distributed and then most of the money will actually stay be with the very rich people and then you have quite a lot of people who are actually um, of middle income or, or low income, the very poor. So the, there's a big disparity between the very rich and the very poor. And with COVID-19, I think this might this game might be changed. I think that people who who whose um whose organizations or their industries are impacted quite badly may lose quite a bit of their fortune. And those who are somehow in the ITN or in healthcare or whatever that's related or may have the opportunity to actually um, gain more resources. So this is from the end of, let's say, money and distribution. But in terms of um, resources and, let's say, employment, this also breaks, a, this also changed the, the whole ball game altogether. So previously, um, most of our industries and most of our work is very face-to-face, uh, -face, but and like you know, quite quite um physical. But currently, what's happening is that most of the things actually, I think about maybe ninety-five of ninety-five percent of most of whatever that's going on out there has been moved to digital because we all have to stay at home. So it's it's a game changer, and those and people. If let's say I were to say that previously maybe about 10% of the population is quite digital. They are quite savvy with digital things and uh, engagement and whatever. But with this, the rest of the 90% will have to actually 
uh, decide, decide whether, whether they want, want to jump jump, jump in and or just just, just to learn these things, things quickly and to apply them. them. So um, the, a lot of more people are coming in and trying out new things, um, playing, playing a new game to, to, to in, in, their, in their respect. respect. And um, it, it could mean that the ground is somewhat level. So if let's say someone is doing very, very well in um, new uh, IT initiatives or had a bright new idea, so it doesn't really matter whether you were a senior manager or you were a starting employee or something. So if you manage to grasp the opportunity and and then uh, move with it, like for example, finding a job, right now uh, the jobs that they have right now is the so social distancing ambassador. I don't, I don't think, think it requires, requires you to have much knowledge previously, but if let's say um, a senior manager who uh, is not having any assignments part-time versus um, a janitor who is not having any assignments part-time as well, both of them can go for a job and then both of them might get the same job. So, you know, flattening and leveling. Then, um, actually, this uh, this this brought me to think about an example, which I saw on TV as well. So when COVID-19 first came out and it was actually rampant in China, I think one, one person, one smart person in Hong Kong decided to actually import machines from India and started making surgical masks. And then he found that uh, he, he did some type, he did some prototyping and etc. And the demand was actually astonishing. It's like so much demand for 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 surgical masks then for China, but right now I think there's even more. So it's it's you no, know, it's worldwide, and I think oh, internationally, most places are short of masks. So for him, actually, this is something which he just. I believe that he's probably not in the healthcare industry, and probably not someone who was actually doing machinery or related things. But, but when, when he, he saw the news, or he, he learned about this COVID-19 being around, then it was the coronavirus, um, I, he, he thought that perhaps there will be a demand for surgical masks. So he quickly actually brought those things in, and then he, he uh, invested in the machines and trying to do things. And then right now, I think that it, he probably has become very wealthy. So things like that. No, I, I, I believe, believe there are many other different, different opportunities out there right now. now. No, just, just like the Uno card. card. Um, I, I believe it could be opportunities like right now. Um, delivery, uh, logistics and delivery should be one of those very hot things right now. Like, like, like I'm actually I have ordered like surgical masks and I'll be waiting for them to come come in and I'll go and collect. So that's one end. It is actually very. Um, I think quite in demand right now. After the first waves of COVID-19 and that we have the DOSCON or Code Orange, most of the education places and businesses decided to move their meetings or their classes online. So suddenly all the video cameras and all the webcams were wiped up. And maybe microphones or sound systems as well. So that, that end is actually... It's also, also doing quite well because of this. Then you have um, the online services, like you know, uh, online vendors or platforms. So, yeah, you know, things like that. And maybe social media is probably doing very well right now because previously I had no time for social media. Now, since I'm at home and I'm doing this, and that's one of the ways in which I can connect with people, I use it quite a lot. So there's a lot. Of, it's big money there. And what else? Oh, don't forget the sanitizers, uh, the those producers of sanitizers, uh, disinfectants, um, healthcare related uh, disposables and consumables. No thermometers. So, so all these things and right now okay, respirators. No car companies are moving to make respirators so that there are enough people, enough respirators to support those in ICU. So. You know, there's actually quite a, a lot of 
vibrance out there. And actually, there's quite a lot of job opportunities out there as well, provided you you are able to break out of your mold and to think, you know, to think differently. If you are to have divergent thinking, rather than that, oh, uh, I've always been trained in this and I've always done this and those are my only skills and I, uh, I only want to find jobs like that. If that's, that's the way you set yourself, you're very fixed, then you'll, you'll be stuck because that's not how the world will move on. Because maybe after COVID-19, I'm not even sure whether your industry will still exist. Maybe it has moved on and um, that maybe like people will decide and realize that actually they don't need so much um, uh, consumption, you no know, excessive consumption. Maybe they don't think that they are going to need like 500 dresses at home or something anymore, or that they feel that there are other easier, more convenient things to do things. And then suddenly your whole industry will be gone. That can happen as well. So I will encourage you to actually think or rethink about um, how the world could be changing and that how you might want to adapt yourself and to find new ways in which you can actually try and make a living or to try and meet the needs of people out there in the world. Okay? So I think that's the end. Okay, so if I were to do a last recap. So these are the seven key attitudes which I actually talked through about just now. First, you have hope. Then uh, second is about mindfulness. Third is greed. Fourth is surrender. Fifth is finding meaning. Six, connectedness. And seven, seizing the opportunity. Okay. So, okay, that's all from me today. Is, Is it, it going, going out? out? Yeah. So that's all from me today. Uh, I've come to realize that actually live broadcast is very tiring. And it takes up so much time of my day, you know, just to plan and think about like the what I should do next day and etc. And then there's all this setup and everything. So I'm just renting it a bit. So in view of that, I've decided to actually um, have less uh, broadcasts. So actually I can have a bit more of my life back. So the new, uh, the new arrangement and frequency will be that I'll be doing the broadcast only on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. And then for the weekend, I'll just I'll just take a break and rest. Yeah. So um, I will still do a broadcast tomorrow. And then we will then go to the 135 kind of uh, frequency. Okay. So that's all for now. Thank you and bye-bye. <laughs>